Today's video is on a topic that I actually haven't done a video on, so I'm definitely due. Melasma, a skin condition that many people struggle with. We'll talk about its underlying causes and most importantly, some of the at-home skincare treatments that you can do, but I'll also mention some in-clinic procedures that are known to assist with melasma as well. Disclaimer, I am not a medical professional and if you're dealing with melasma, you really should be in consultation with one. This video is simply meant to be educational and of course, because I'm so hilarious, a little bit entertaining. Apologies if you're hearing the sounds of summer in the background. People have been cutting their lawns all day. I've been trying to film this video and then finally I just said, we'll just go for it now. So cheers to all the weekend warriors out there using their hedge trimmers and lawnmowers when I'm trying to film. Melasma is a pigmentation condition that really Really presents as patches of pigmented skin. It's very similar to sun damage of which I have a lot of on my face from spending years out in the sun with inadequate sun protection. But melasma tends to be a more patchy and larger scale appearance versus the sunspots or age spots as you may know them as. And you may see it in large patches across the forehead, the cheeks, or even across the upper lip, which some people say it makes them look like they have a mustache. In order to understand melasma, we need to understand a little bit about our skin. Our skin contains melanocytes, which produce pigment called melanin. And melanin gives color to our eyes, our hair, our skin. But when those melanocytes overproduce melanin, it can lead to the skin condition known as melasma. The exact cause of melasma isn't fully understood, but there are many things that medical professionals believe contribute to melasma. Probably the most notable one is hormonal changes. And that's why you often hear the term pregnancy mask associated with the melasma that people can get during pregnancy. With that hormonal contribution, it's often also found in perimenopausal or menopausal women as well. And even taking hormonal contraceptives like the pill are thought to contribute to melasma as well. There could be a genetic link to melasma, so if others in your family have it, you may be more predisposed. And certain medications like hormone replacement therapies could also be responsible for triggering melasma. As well, some of the skin treatments we may undergo could actually exacerbate melasma. And what I'm talking about here is chemical peels that could cause inflammation to the skin and then further exacerbate existing melasma. But sun exposure is another major factor. UV radiation stimulates melanocytes, which then in turn increases the production of melanin. That's why we get a suntan in the summer. When melasma appears, it's usually characterized by brown, patchy, pigmented skin. But that pigmentation often has an irregular border and often has a blotchy or patchy distribution. It also typically occurs symmetrically across the face, another reason why it differs from sunspots or age spots. It's very important to note when treating melasma, you need a comprehensive approach and a healthy dose of patients. When it comes to pigmentation, it's just near impossible to have an overnight result, but rather a long-term strategy that focuses on protecting the skin so that you're not doing things that further exacerbate your melasma, as well as treating the condition long-term. For those of you who have melasma, I'd love to hear in the comments below if you're comfortable sharing what you think triggered your melasma and what types of things you're doing to treat it. One of the number one at-home treatments that you can employ if you have melasma is with regards to sun protection. The sun is so essential for vitamin D, for mental health and wellness, spending time outdoors, but it also has a dark side. Get it? It's the sun, it's light, but it also has a dark side. That dark side is that it can wreak havoc on your skin. Not only can it be responsible for premature aging and skin cancer, it can also cause or make your melasma worse. So using a broad spectrum sunscreen of at least SPF 30 or higher, I typically tend to lean towards SPF 50 sunscreens. Applied every single day and reapplied every two hours if you're spending an extended amount of time outside. Physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens contain zinc oxide and titanium, generally tolerable by most skin types. However, they tend to leave a white cast. Personally, my favorite textured sunscreens are Korean chemical sunscreens. They just apply beautifully to the skin. And all in all, you just have to find a daily sunscreen that you will be motivated to use every day. Some of my favorite Korean sunscreens are this one. This is Skin 1004's Madagascar Centella sunscreen. This is literally empty. 
I'm waiting for my next shipment to arrive so I have my next batch. I also love Round Labs Birch Juice Sunscreen. I've talked about both of these a lot on my channel. I'll put a link below in the description box of all my favorite sunscreens because one of my favorite mineral sunscreens is actually from the drugstore. It's Australian Gold's Tinted Mineral Sunscreen and I've been testing Vichy sunscreen out for the last few months. This is a fantastic one, kind of similar in texture to the La Roche-Posay Anthelius one if you're familiar with that, but another great drugstore option that really applies effortlessly to the skin. There are just so many formulations now that leave that dewy, beautiful finish on the skin, making it an easy last step in your skincare routine in the morning. And you don't have to look like you have baby oil all over your face and smelling like coconuts. I'm looking at you, Hawaiian Tropic. I'll link a video at the end of this one highlighting a lot of my favorite Korean sunscreens and I also have another one coming up soon so make sure you're subscribed to watch that. Also, do not underestimate the power of good sun protective clothing and that includes a hat and sunglasses wherever you can and especially because a hat and sunglasses can be so stylish and cute. In addition to a daily sunscreen, there's also several topical skincare products that can help to lighten and brighten the look of your skin, which will lessen the look of your melasma. Hydroquinone is a commonly prescribed ingredient that works to suppress the melanin production in the skin. It's available by prescription only, although there may be a handful of OTC products floating around out there that still exist. Drop a comment below if you know of any. But using hydroquinone really requires the supervision of a medical professional because you can't be on hydroquinone long term. There's a risk of rebound hyperpigmentation, so your medical professional really needs to work with you closely to be sure that doesn't happen. Hydroquinone is not without its side effects. It's kind of controversial and another reason why you need to be sure it's the right solution for your skin. Other really effective ingredients that really target brightening of the skin, which are great for just anti-aging or well-aging in general, but of course if you're dealing with dark spots or melasma as well, are kojic acid, Acid, azelaic acid, vitamin C, arbutin, and retinoids. These ingredients work to inhibit melanin production, but many of them also have additional skin benefits, including inducing collagen production in the skin and promoting skin cell turnover. So some great well-aging benefits as well. Making them ideal to incorporate into your skincare routine because of those added skin benefits. Oh, I forgot, some of them are anti-inflammatory as well. But like I said at the beginning, manage your expectations on what these kinds of products can deliver. Using these types of products will be cumulative over time rather than an instant overnight result. And I do want to shout out Dr. Idris's Pillow Talk Derm new skincare launch. I reviewed this entire line of products on a previous video. I'll link it at the end of this video in case you missed it. Dr. Shireen's a fabulous content creator here on YouTube, but she's also a dermatologist and she really focused her skincare line on targeting hyperpigmentation. And I feel like these products are ideal for melasma treatment at home as well. It's called her Major Fade System and it includes ingredients like vitamin C, arbutin, and kojic acid. To shout out another content creator that I love here on YouTube, which is Mad About Skin, I've raved about this product of his as well. This is the Perfect Blend Exfoliating Gel. It also has kojic acid in it and a great blend of alpha hydroxy acid, which really helped to brighten the skin. In the retinoid family, there are a couple of retinaldehydes and a couple of retinol products. If you're unsure what the difference are between those two, I've done a full video on retinoids that explains it all for you. I'll link it at the end of this video too. Paula's Choice 1% Retinol Treatment is a great retinol serum. My skin really loves this formulation and it works great in my evening skincare routine. I don't think I've ever talked about this one on my channel. This is by Rock. It's their contour cream. I really love creamy textures when it comes to retinols, especially if you're new to retinol, because the retinol itself is sort of buffered within that creamy formulation, which makes it more gentler on the skin. At least that's been my experience. If you're new to retinol or if you have really sensitive skin, opting for a retinol like this is a great idea. If you know my channel, you know I love retinaldehydes or short form retinol. And this one I've talked about before, it's Peach and Lily's Retinol for All Renewing Serum. But a new one I've been trying out is by Nature. This is their retinaldehyde cream. It's a 0.05% retinol. Has wonderful ingredients in the formulation that my skin is really enjoying. I really love the texture of this one. And let me know if you want a full review on this particular product. So those are my recommendations for really over-the-counter or skincare treatments that you can do at home. When it comes to in-clinic treatments, of course the fact that these should be performed by a medical professional or a dermatologist. A popular treatment
treatment for melasma is doing a chemical peel, which involves applying a chemical solution to the skin to exfoliate and lighten that pigmentation. Now I mentioned these two as at-home treatments. Both of these are exfoliating treatments that can be done in the comfort of your own home. Of course, they're not gonna be to the same extent as an in-clinic chemical peel. The downtime and the recovery time from an in-clinic peel is much more significant than what you're gonna have with an at-home treatment. But your dermatologist can work with you to determine what type of chemical peel would be best suited for your skin. Usually these treatments require multiple visits to the dermatologist, it's not just a one and done. So it's important to consider that into your cost. And that's because peels are really targeting the surface layer pigment of the skin. So in order to really get at that melasma, they may need to go deeper and that requires more visits. So a chemical peel not only requires the investment of money, but also time because you need to factor in the downtime for your skin to recover before you can go back for your next appointment. And that could take up to three or more appointments to achieve your results. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've actually had this done and what your results were. Another effective in-clinic treatment is laser therapy. Lasers can really target that melanin and break up the pigmentation, leading to its gradual disappearance. Lasers actually work really well on targeting sunspots, but melasma can be a little bit tricky. So like I said, using chemical peels and lasers for the treatment of melasma has to be in consideration with a medical professional because there are some cases where these two treatments could actually make the melasma worse. So it may sound disheartening, like melasma is something you just have to live with the treatments are limited it's expensive to treat certainly in clinic it has a potential for rebound but please don't underestimate the power of protection using a daily SPF wearing some protective clothing and incorporating some of these products that I talked about today to really attack that melasma or pigmentation issue on the daily in a long-term solution. I'm really looking forward to reading your experiences in the comments below. If you're comfortable sharing, please do. If you haven't already watched these videos that are up on screen now, click on those to watch them next. Thanks as always for watching and I hope you have a fabulous day.